Hello, this is Dave, and today I'd like to make a video about how to build a Pinewood Derby car. So here we have the Pinewood Derby car that I made for my daughter. It's a Shopkins, uh, Shopkins uh, Derby car. Uh, they're called the Powder Puff Derby, and uh, they have little holes inside. So I put these little sticks here, and the Shopkin attaches just like that. So when you build your car, we got to make sure that it's not more than five ounces. So you have to get yourself a scale like this one here. Uh, you zero it out and you put all of the uh, pieces, the wheels, the nails, uh, the car, the Shopkins, everything on it. And then you read it and make sure that it's, you know, five ounces. So this is a great scale. I got this from CBS. Uh, it's very cheap, probably like 20 bucks or something like that. The other thing you need, um, they have this tool here. And what this tool does is it has two pieces that go together like this. And what this is used for is to flatten out the nail so that when you look at your nail, your nail will be completely flat instead of concaved. Uh, usually they come bubbled at the top and they curve sort of. So what you wanna do is you wanna to try to get it so that the wheel spins on the, uh, on the nail without any resistance at all. And there's no burrs or anything like that. Uh, you wanna make sure that we're gonna sand off all of these little burrs that come naturally with the nail. And sometimes underneath the head of the nail, you see this little piece of metal that's there. And that will definitely slow your car down. Uh, there's other things that this uh, thing does, but let me show you what it does. Uh, there's three things that it does. So on the top here, you're going to see that there's a hole there between the two blocks. And that is pretty much to put the nail inside and pound it down uh, with a hammer. Put it on a hard surface and smash it down so that you get a flat nail. Okay. On the other side... Uh, there is a curved indented uh, spot right there. And in this way, you could put the nail inside. And when you bang it down, you'll bang it down and you'll make like a U in the nail head so that <clears throat> there is no resistance being that it's flat. You want to kind of curve it out a little bit like this so when the wheel spins, it spins uh, without the wheel having any resistance from it being straight. So that's what that piece is. Then there's also another part to this puzzle and there's this piece that goes on top here and what you do with this piece is you put it on to your block like this and there's two sides to it there's uh one side here which is marked uh, which is marked 25 and then this side here which is marked 15. so what you do with this here is you put the nail inside here like that and you place it down on the on the on a hard surface and you bang it with a hammer and what it will do is it will it will bend the nail slightly so you instead of having a nail that's perfectly straight you can bend the nail slightly perfectly controlled by this uh whether you do it a small amount or a large amount uh you you bang it and the nail slightly bends so when you put it inside the car uh, and the holes that we're going to pre-drill with this uh, you'll have a little bit of a tilt because there's a theory that if the one of the wheels is up a little bit you want to turn it so that it's up you're going to mark the nail and it's up and it'll stay off of the ground now the less wheels on the track the faster the car will go uh, but you don't want to bend them too much uh, the back wheel you want to bend up higher one of the back wheels you bend up higher and the other wheel you bend sort of down a little bit so that means that only two wheels are riding the rail because uh, one wheel is up in the back, and then the one in the front, the wheel is down a little bit so that it raises off the ground and the opposite wheel is off the ground. So now you only have two wheels opposite from each other, uh, two wheels opposite from each other. So one here, one there, and there's only two wheels riding the rail. So you can bend your nails with this here. Now, the other thing is you have this block here, and the block has pre-cut uh lines here and you have to keep those lines there because the judges have to see those two lines but a lot of people they throw their nail into that slot which is not a good idea 
what you want to do is you want to place it inside one of these holders here and screw it down tight and move it over a little bit from that line. Don't go exactly on the line. Move back a little bit. Now, the wider the wheelbase, the better. Uh, so you move it back a little bit. You tighten it up. Then they have three holes here that you can screw your drill bit into. So you, if you have a drill bit here, you take it and you place it inside here with the with the uh, screwdriver, I mean the uh, power tool, and you drill a hole just slightly shy of the nail after the wheel is on. And in this way, you get a straight uh, hole bored into your piece of wood. And you can use the higher up one so that you can get the lift of one of the wheels that you need to lift. Uh, or you can bend the nail with the bender. I don't recommend doing both because your car will fall off the track. Uh, you can't bend it too much, just slightly enough just to keep it level off the ground. When you look at the car with the wheels on it and you roll it, you're going to see only two wheels opposite of each other uh, rolling. I don't know whether you want to do the front or the back uh, bent and this one higher up. Or you want to bend both nails uh, so that you get the lift from of the tires from that. Uh, but I don't recommend doing both. I don't recommend uh, bending the nail as well as raising it up uh, in your drill. So that's that. And that's pretty much it. Now, as far as the nail goes, uh, after you bang it down and flatten the nail, uh, you might want to concave it. That's fine, too. And then what you want to do is you want to place it right on a, a drill. So you want to take the already flattened nail and put it inside of a drill. And then what you do is you take a piece of um, sandpaper, this is uh, 150 grit, and you fold it in half like this, okay? And then you place it on here with the grit side against the head of the nail. And you fold it over, and then you simply just start turning. And you push up against the head. And that will smoothen out any burrs in the nail. And now it's nice and smooth so that the wheel can spin faster uh, on the nail. Okay? So now this nail is ready to go. It's right, right here. And it's nice and smooth. I don't know if it will focus. Let me try to get it to focus. And this nail is shiny and completely flat. And there's no burrs that stick up, uh, you know, from the head. So now that wheel has no resistance. As far as the wheels go, you're not allowed to modify the wheels anymore. There used to be a way to modify the wheels uh, so that you could sand them down and make it uh, shorter so that it doesn't bounce or something like that but you cannot modify the wheel so do not modify the wheels the only thing you can do is put that uh, powder on it uh, so that the graphite powder so that it it slides faster so after you get everything all set up with your car you put the wheels on you have it all painted up you go for a test run usually they have a test one a test run the day before or a week before and you try out your car, you weigh it with them, they clear it, they put a sticker on it, um, and you just have your car. So when you build your car, you're gonna need maybe a table saw or a chop saw, and you wanna be able to cut all of the wood from the block that you get originally. Now all this is from this block. I cut it down so that I got a big chunk here and I used all the excess uh, wood that I cut to make this uh, carriage here. Uh, you're going to need some good glue here. Uh, best is the Gorilla Glue, uh, the wood glue. And you're also going to need a way to cut uh, with turning your blade so that you can cut around different things. I didn't really use this this much, uh, uh, but I used some chisels to chisel things uh, a little bit better. Now, when you put your car on the scale and it, it's underweight, uh, which mine is not. Uh, you can use things like this. These are um, sold by the Pinewood shop uh, for your local uh, Boy Scouts or whatever, or you can get them online ahead of time uh, from eBay or whatever it is. And these are weights. And uh, with this weight, you pretty much screw it on with a screw, 
Uh, it's best to always put your weight towards the back of the car because you want to have the car pushing the weight down. Or you could use something like this where you could break off individual pieces after putting it on the scale and you get your exact five ounces. Uh, you want to be exact with your number, maybe a 0.1 less. Uh, and this you drill it with a, a drill bit and you could stick it inside the car, a block of wood uh, in any spot that you can find. A place to put this in. Uh, you might want some crazy glue too if you're crazy gluing uh, stickers and things like that. You can use stickers. Um, but your car has to be completely uh, the size that exactly that it is and it has to be the length that it is. You could round the corners or something like that and you want to pretty much keep it smooth on the side uh, without stickers so the wheels don't rub up against any stickers or things like that. Don't forget your hot glue gun. Uh, you're going to need that if you're going to be gluing characters on it and things like that. I have uh, my son's car. I have a Christmas tree ornament that I'm going to be using. His theme is going to be Charlie Brown or Snoopy, and it's going to be Boy Scout Snoopy. I, I broke the stick off, and I'm going to put a little flag here because it was sticking way up too high. But I'm going to be putting these on. See, this is made out of a resin. And I cut it down so that it fits perfectly on the car. Uh, I have three of them. Two of them are in the mail coming. It's a tent. And the other one is actually a Pinewood Derby ornament. Uh, I'll put the links in the description for these as well. And you can cut these uh, because they're resin. And I cut it with the hacksaw uh, so that they would fit on perfectly. And all I'm pretty much going to do is I'm going to slice this down the end, make it thinner. <clears throat> so I put the holes with the tools that I have. Uh, put the nails in the wheels and paint it yellow and green on top to match like grass and i'm going to just glue these with the hot glue gun right on to the uh, car itself so the nail sticks out two millimeters from the edge of the wheel so what you want to do is you want to set your drill into your uh, screw gun and you want to mark off exactly an inch and a half uh, with tape so you don't go any further when you drill into this. Uh, so you wanna drill just enough so that the nail, when it goes in, just a little bit sticks into undrilled wood. Uh, if you go too far and you make the drill longer than the nail goes in, uh, you're gonna have a loose nail. So you wanna be able to have just the tip of it, a half a, a, a quarter, a half a millimeter, uh, so that it sticks inside the hole itself. So we're gonna go ahead and drill this. Uh, we're gonna do this on the lowest setting here and we're just gonna simply drill right up to the tape and that's it we have it drilled uh, a perfect hole and leave it on until you do the other side and when you take it off you'll slip your nail in slightly tap it in uh, and the nail will be uh, the wheel will be tight up against the car but a little bit out okay So now when we take off that piece, you'll see that I have the hole perfect. And on this side, I have it down further. So this side is just slightly lifted. So I'm, I'm going to use a straight nail, not a bent nail, on the back wheels. So now we could just simply pop in our wheels to the hole that's already made for us, push it down inside, and it'll grip right in there perfectly. Here are the two nails. Uh, the one on the right is a nail that's not flattened. So you can see it has that roundness and you see this nail on this side is flat and notice that the nail is perfectly smooth on this side as compared to the little burrs that you see uh, all around the nail okay so this is the front of the car this is the back of the car so you see one hole is higher than the other hole that's my lift i'm going to use a straight nail on that but on this side here both of these holes are at the lowest point so that I'm going to bend one of the nails just slightly uh, so that uh, that nail is off the ground. Uh, or you can bend it slightly so that the nail, uh, only that wheel is touching the ground. So what's going to happen also uh, when you bend the nail is when you bend the nail, when your car goes down the track, it wiggles and jiggles side to side like this. Uh, it goes down, it spins, and it jiggles back side to side. When you bend the nail... Uh, you slightly bend it like this, 
only the edge of the wheel, one of the edges of the wheel is touching the track. Uh, it's not the whole wheel that's touching the track. And being that you bend the nail, when it spins, it's going to stay brushed up against the head of the nail uh, so that you get a nice spin and it doesn't wiggle around. Because the more your car jiggles in that slot, uh, the slower it goes. It, it, it has resistance, so it's, it slows down. To make your car go fast, straight, without jiggling, without the wheel jiggling, you have to bend the nail slightly on that nail that's touching the track. Okay, I have my car here, and I have all four wheels in. Uh, I use the bent nail technique on the front uh, left, and it's bending downwards. And when it bends downwards, it means this side of the wheel is going to be riding on the track. The outside of the wheel be riding on the track like that, you see? And then in this side here, this is the low nail. Uh, so that this wheel is the only wheel on the track because this one's raised up a little bit. So now, watch this. You get a teetering. You see this? And because it's teetering, now that means that these two wheels here are not even touching the track. Uh, it's going to ride on these two wheels. This one slightly bent down, and this one raised, uh, I've lowered down to the lowest point. Uh, being that this one is raised up a little bit. So, Peter. So to test out your car, you put it on a smooth surface and you just drop it down and you see if it tilts towards any particular side. Uh, it's supposed to tilt towards the bent wheel um, and that will keep it up against the side of the track and make it so that it doesn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, go back and forth like that. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments. I'll be happy to show you. I'll even send you short videos uh, if you give me like an email or uh, address or something like that on how to do these things. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.